Podcast and a rare look at a project that we're going to show you today that involves casting the model that we have created. Before we do that, the molten gold that we have to use needs to be cleaned because many people want to use for sentimental purposes their old gold or maybe you're just taking a mix of broken chains and other pieces of gold. That gold has mixed alloys. It needs to be blended and cleaned beforehand. We're going to show you how that's done. Then we're going to show you how a ring is cast. Let's get started. All right, so first we have our scrap metal. Now it's a particular weight because we know by weighing the wax how much gold we need to use. But this gold has come from many other sources, not just brand new, which often isn't the case. So beforehand, what we have to do is melt it together. I have a silicon quartz stirring rod where the gold won't stick to it and also the dirt will adhere to it that allows us to blend it and then we're going to pour it in water. Yes. So we have our bucket of water ready. We have our gold in the crucible. We're going to use a flux to help it melt and blend together. And then we're going to pour it. So let's show you how it's done. I'm going to go ahead and put what's called flux. It allows the gold to blend and melt together and the impurities to rise to the surface. Here is the torch. It's a beast of a torch, but it will get the job done quickly. And that's what we need. Our flask is in the oven at the correct temperature. So once this is done, we can move on. Now you'll see the gold start to melt and form a ball so to speak and once it does then we're going to make sure that we mix it and homogenize it so to speak blend it together so that all the alloys are evenly distributed from the various pieces now you can see it's one big hot piece of gold. It will come up to a temperature of around 13 to 1400 degrees and reach a cherry red. Now I can already tell it's at a point that I am going to set this down for a moment and stir it. This picks up and removes any of the dirt, so to speak, that does not burn off. And once I see it's kind of a glassy surface, I know I've completed that process. I have backdrops here, of course, for safety. So it was good that you saw that because it served an exact purpose. Now let's go ahead and bring this up to temperature. You can see how that surface, see how it's much shinier and a nice mirror finish. That's what you want. What you see floating on top is the flux I just applied that when poured, it will break away in the water and it contains the impurities. Now, I'm gonna let that just, you can see it just starts to bubble a little bit. In other words, bringing it up to the temperature I need, I'm gonna raise it up over the water now, continuing to keep it to temperature. And once I get it to where I feel it's gonna stay viscous enough, I pour it from a height high enough that it will cool at the proper rate and create the granules I want. All right, here we go. And we pour just a little at a time, leaving the flame right at the edge of it. Okay, what you see left is just red hot flux. And now we can turn the torch off and retrieve our metal. We have made the metal available for you to see exactly what happens. 
you can see the beautiful shiny gold that turns into little granules and shot is what we call it. And more importantly, what you can see is and are the impurities at the surface. Those impurities are ones that did not burn off at the temperatures we were working with. So those are the ones that we want to get rid of because they will be included in the molten metal and in your model when you cast it. They create problems with the quality of the gold, the porosity, in other words, the amount of air left in the gold, and also weak points in the gold. This is a step that should and is necessary to do the job right when you're working with estate gold, so to speak. And if it's skipped, you cause yourself a lot of problems. That's how it's done right, and you can see why now. Right, so we've poured the water off. Now, this is exciting always because I feel like it was, uh, I was panning gold. And this is what I recovered, or at least in my fairy tale world, I imagine it to be. But other than that, this is really a uh, wonderful way to take dirty, older gold and broken chains and look at the, how beautiful they come out in this process. Just shiny and ready for the next step. They have been blended together. All the alloys are equal and the same. Now we're going to take this and melt it once again and pour it into our model. I'll show you how that's done next. So we are at our oven. The flask is inside the oven. We have it at a particular temperature. To burn out the wax that's inside the flask, it goes through a series of different temperatures for different lengths of time. Then you bring it back down. It goes as high, depending on what you're casting, as 13 to 1400 degrees. That totally burns out the wax, leaving no residue. Then you bring it down to around 900 degrees. Right now, the thermostat just kicked on, kicking it up a little bit. And depending on which metal you're using, that temperature can change. We're going to be casting 14 karat yellow gold for the size flask we're using. A good temperature, core temperature of the flask is around 900 degrees. So we're going to use the tongs. We're going to grab our flask and we're going to take it over to the vacuum casting machine where we will pour the molten gold into it. So let's go ahead and get it out of the oven. You want to get a firm grip, turn it sideways, and here we are off. We have our gold now that we have cleaned. We have put it back into the crucible. At this point, we are going to melt it together again. We have the flux in there and we apply the heat. Now, always uh, we have to keep in mind that the flame reflection, in other words, wherever that we point the torch, if we don't do it at the right angle, that flame can be burning something behind that you often don't even notice. Hence, better to put up your fire bricks to protect in case of that event happens. Now, over the many years, you kind of learn not to do that because you've probably burnt something up <laughs> before that you've learned the lesson from. Now this gold, once it hits a particular temperature, it blends together very quickly. It's called the flow point and then the melt point. All right, you can see all of a sudden it's one and then we want it to be able to be as viscous pretty much as if it was water. Now you can see there's some contaminants and flux on the surface. At this point, I'm going to lay it down and get my quartz rod and stir the metal. That picks up a good bit off of the surface so that we get a really clean pour. Now it's coming up to temperature. I'll show you 
how glassy now it is and we're very near the temperature at which we will pour it and we are there let's move it over to the in um, this is a casting machine that will pull a vacuum on the flask and thereby pulling the gold through it now I'm left-handed so I'm gonna have to pour it this way and when I see it come up to temperature I hit the vacuum pedal and I check the vacuum pressure and when it comes up to around 25 we have our maximum pull and it is time to pour that metal and at this point you pour it all at once all right you just let it run for a moment you want to make sure any of that molten gold is poured pulled through but it does harden very quickly now at this point the best way to remove the invest investment around it is to get a pail of water. So let's do that and show you how we remove it from the flask. We have our hot flask. You can't wait too long because it cools down. Then you have to hammer it out of here. Let's put it in the pail of water and the temperature difference will crack that investment hopefully and we'll get our model out of there. Ah, listen. Ah, love that sound. Tells you you put it in there at the right temperature. Okay, now we fish it out. <gasps> I always like to feel with my hand first so that I know. I think we have a successful cast. Look at our model. And this is the color gold is after it's cast. It is in the finishing that brings out the beautiful shininess to it. You're seeing something that no one gets to see because you're behind the scenes in the How Do You series that will take you to the back of the shop. And that's where we are because a lot of people don't want you to see gold that color. But we want to show you how we can transform it into the beautiful piece of jewelry that you wear today. All right, I'll give you a closer look at the project and let's get it cleaned up here is how it looks after it's cast and we have taken the wire brush and removed what's called the investment the white uh, type of material that we put around it this is a fantastic outcome for what we did i'm very pleased with it there's only a couple little bubbles underneath and they occur when uh you're pulling the vacuum in, on the investment or you're, you're trying to remove the bubbles on the investment and they get stuck up underneath. But that's hardly, that's minimal. That is minimal. You can get really a lot more. So I'm very pleased with the outcome. We have a complete cast. What we do next is we saw the sprue off and we start finishing it. And oh, what a transformation it will become. But we have a nice dense cast. I'm really pleased with the way it is. And that is how you do it in the How Do You series of casting and of purifying the metal first, doing it the right way, you come out with the right ending. Here we have the transformation and it is complete. And that is always exciting no matter how many times you've done it. We started with the block of wax. We carved our model out of it. The model was attached to a wax sprue, as you see here. And then after it was cast, it was of this color, and it always is. It is in the finishing, as you see, that brings out the beauty, the color, the gloss, the shine. And it is now ready to set the stone. This is the process that has been going on for thousands of years. It's called the lost wax method because your original model and wax it's gone it is burnout and if anything had gone wrong you have to start over and carve another wax luckily in 
the How Do You series, it came out perfect. And that is how you cast a ring and purify the gold when it is needed, which most of the time people love using their old gold for sentimental reasons. You got to see how it's done. So thank you for joining me and hope to see you in the next episode.